and for the headlines. Weather forecast, El Nino diminishes La Nina, watch declared. Local news, COVID defense against water supply stoppage in CDO regarding 400 million payables. Moreno distances himself from multi-million water contracts involving COWD Metro Pac Kobe. Clarex opposes Oka regarding the water contract matter. Oro police address the surge in crime, urging public assistance. National news. The Philippines will persist with resupply missions despite the absence of supply boats. The Supreme Court dismisses the petition against the Jeepney Modernization Program on procedural grounds. International news. Nikki Haley's departure signifies a Republican shift toward America first according to analysts. Entertainment. Sarah Geronimo expresses that receiving a Billboard Award has reignited her passion. Alden Richards intends to collaborate on an upcoming project with Catherine Bernardo. Sports. In the PVL, Signal successfully resists NX led to maintain their undefeated status. Bianca Busamante prepares for the F1 Academy 2024. International feature. With the removal of the age limit, is Patricia Javier considering participating in Miss Universe? National feature. Michelle D promotes love and respect amidst the transgender conflict between Filipinos and Thais in Bangkok. Trivia. Who is the inventor of mathematics? Good morning, Philippines. Maganda umaga, Luzon. Ug mayo adla, Visayas ug Mindanao. I am Athalia Pisaniel. Weather forecast. El Nino diminishes La Nina watch declared. The El Nino is displaying signs of weakening and the possibility of returning to a neutral condition between April and June has been mentioned by the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration. Additionally, climate models indicate an increased likelihood of La Nina developing between June and August, leading Pag-asa to issue a La Nina watch. La Nina is characterized by cooler than average sea surface temperatures, resulting in above normal rainfall on land. The issuance of the La Nina watch signifies favorable conditions for its development within the next six months, with a probability of 55% or more. Despite this, Pagasa emphasizes continued attention to the current El Nino, causing significantly reduced rainfall. May and June are crucial months. Due to the combined impact of El Nino and pre-developing La Nina, suggesting a higher chance of reduced rain and a slight delay in the onset of the rainy season. While El Nino effects became ev evident in early 2024, Pag-asa notes a similar delayed impact for La Nina. The public is advised to monitor El Nino's effects, practice water conservation, and stay hydrated amid elevated temperatures. Local news. Kobe defense against water supply stoppage in CDO regarding 400 million peso payables. Cagayan de Oro Bulk Water Incorporated will no longer supply water to Cagayan de Oro Water District, which has failed to settle its substantial financial obligations, totaling almost billions of pesos under the signed Bulk Water Supply Agreement. Kobe senior legal officer. Attorney Robredo Rodrigo stated that the financial standing of banks and suppliers is adversely affected due to the COWD's failure to meet its obligations. While Kobe has extended understanding and considerations, COWD has not addressed its commitments. The contract outlines automatic bulk water rate adjustments from January 2021 to December 2023 and January 2024, 
unmet by COWD, which insists on not continuing payments using the old contract amount. COWD depends its position by citing the BWSA's provision that accepts payment in case of a tragedy or severe calamity affecting actual operations and income. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic affecting the world for several years is also highlighted by COWD. The city government is urged to take action for a win-win solution, prioritizing the people's interests in this issue. Moreno distances himself from multi-million water contracts involving COWD, Metro Park, Kobe. The COWD and the Metro Pacific Water Consortium have long-standing disagreements, leading to the formation of Kobe as the city's water supplier. Former City Mayor Oscar Moreno disputes the claims made by City Mayor Rolando Clarick's Uis Cap, asserting that he had he was already questioning the COA regarding the COWD Rio Verde contract before Metropac entered the scene. Moran expresses gratitude for Metropac's entry into the city, giving rise to Kobe as a current water supplier for a significant portion of the city. The water issue gained attention when Kobe issued a second billing statement to COWD Warning of water supply disruption if the nearly billion peso financial obligation is not settled. COWD initially sought a rate hike for water usage to fund operational improvements. But the administration rejected the proposal due to the poor timing amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Despite UI's stance on the inopportune timing for a water rate increase, Moreno, a corporate lawyer, argues it is necessary for COWD's operational sustainability. Clarex opposes OCA regarding the water contract matter. Cagayan de Oro City Mayor Rolando Clarex Uy responded directly to former Mayor o Oscar Moreno's denial of involvement in the Cagayan de Oro Water District and Cagayan de Oro Bulk Incorporated contract controversy during a recent press conference. We emphasize that if Moreno had been transparent initially, there wouldn't be current issues, countering Moreno's assertion of clear governance. We presented fact checks to address Moreno's claims and clarify that negotiations with Kobe were underway during Moreno's tenure. He pointed out Metro Park's involvement predating the contract signing in 2017 and challenged Moreno's statements about the 2015 bulk buyer supply proposal. We expressed disappointment over the 500 million peso loan for COWD's upgrades, emphasizing the lack of implementation during Moreno's term. The press conference also covered regulatory responsibilities water rate increases, and dismissed allegations of introducing a new player in the water supply. We assured transparency and accountability in addressing the contract issues, highlighting the establishment of a special task force. He expressed confidence in contingency measures in case Kobe discontinues water supply, reassuring residents of continued access. The debate over the COWD Kobe contract persists, with the administration actively addressing water supply concerns. Oro police address the surge in crime, urging public assistance. Cagayan de Oro City Police conducted a press briefing addressing the surge in shooting incidents and thief in the city, featuring spokesman Police Lieutenant Colonel Evan Vinyas. Recognizing the severity of the crime situation, Colonel Vinyas stressed collaborative efforts with station commanding officers to mitigate rising crime rates. Kokpo outlined strategies, including targeted patrols and increased presence in high crime zones, aiming to restore peace and order. Vinyas highlighted community involvement, urging residents to report suspicious activities and emphasizing ongoing investigations into potential criminal network of connections. He advised vigilance, secure homes, and cautioned against sharing sensitive information on social media. 
emphasizing neighborhood watch programs. Pinas encouraged public collaboration with law enforcement for a safer city. Expressing gratitude to the media, he assured regular updates on anti-crime initiatives, underlining Kokpo's commitment to open communication and community safety.
National news. The Philippines will persist with resupply missions despite the absence of supply boats. Despite facing a shortage of supply boats, the Philippines remains committed to regular rotation and resupply missions to a union shoal, as confirmed by Western Command Commander Vice Admiral Alberto Carlos. The deterioration of indigenous resupply boats will not hinder raw missions with alternative options being explored to manage the load on the remaining supply vessels. Vice Admiral Carlos assured that stationed troops on the BRP Sierra Madre at Ayungi Shoal will have a continuous supply of food, fuel, and water. Despite damages to the new West resupply boat, Onaiza May 4 during a recent mission, Vice Admiral Carlos expressed confidence express confidence in its repairability. While some of the indigenous boats are under repair, the Western Command is determined to ensure the operational readiness of the remaining vessels for future missions. The Supreme Court dismisses the petition against the Jeepney Modernization Program on procedural grounds. In a decision rendered by the N-Bank on, on July 11, 2023, the Supreme Court rejected the certiorari and prohibition petition filed by Bayou Association and Corporation. And its president, Anselmo Perweg, against the Department of Transportation. The court emphasized the petitioner's lack of legal standing and failure to adhere to the hierarchy of courts as they directly approached the Supreme Court without pursuing the matter in lower courts first. The decision, authored by Associate Justice Maria Philomena Singh, highlighted that the petition lacked necessary supporting documents and the court refrained from examining substantive arguments due to the procedural deficiencies. The court underscored the importance of addressing factual issues through proper trial courts or the Court of Appeals, as opposed to the direct recourse to the Supreme Court for the matters not solely of legal nature. The petitioners had contested the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program, arguing it violated their rights by compelling them to upgrade their units with new ones, priced between 1.6 million to 2.1 million. International News Nikki Haley's departure signifies a Republican shift toward America first, according to analysts. As Nikki Haley exits the U.S. presidential race, she emphasizes the imperative of aiding Ukraine against Russian aggression. Yet her call for strong global leadership from Washington faces indifference within her Republican Party. Despite losing most Super Tuesday primaries to former President Donald Trump, Haley advocates for a peace through strength strategy reminiscent of Ronald Reagan. However, Trump's America First approach limiting foreign intervention to clear U.S. interests appears to prevail. The America First Policy Institute argues for a focused rationale in foreign engagements, questioning the extensive U.S. financial burden in conflicts like Ukraine. Haley's departure signals the dominance of Trump's foreign policy path within the party, emphasizing pragmatic national interest, considerations over expansive global commitments. Entertainment. Sara Geronimo expresses that receiving a Billboard Award has reignited her passion. Singer-actress Sarah Geronimo conveyed her gratitude to the supporters and fellow Filipino artists after being recognized at the Billboard Women in Music event in Los Angeles, California. In a post-event video on her Instagram page, Geronimo thanked everyone who contributed to the award, especially Billboard for selecting her as the Philippines' representative. She expressed it is she expressed it as a genuine honor and mentioned that the award 
revitalized her passion and belief in Filipino talent. Hieronimo sees it as an inspiration to showcase world-class Filipino talent globally. Notably, she is the first Filipina to receive an award at the Billboard Women in Music event. And she acknowledged her mother divine as her hero during a celebration of women in the music industry. Alden Richards intends to collaborate on an upcoming project with Catherine Bernardo. Following the success of five breakups in a romance alongside Julia Montes, Alden Richards is set to take on the roles of actor, director, and producer in an upcoming project. During an interview at the 18th edition of Eastwood Walk of Fame, Richards provided updates on his directorial debut and production venture, currently in the post-production phase. He mentioned additional scenes shot in San Pablo, Laguna, expressing gratitude for the collaboration between GMA, Viva Films, and Myriad Entertainment. Having shared behind-the-scenes glimpses on social media, Richards revealed plans for a future film production with his Hello, Love, Goodbye co Star Catherine Bernardo. Sports. In the PVL, Signal successfully resists NX sled to maintain their undefeated status. Despite a late game effort, the NX led Chameleon succumbed to the Signal HD Spikers in straight sets 25 21, 25 17, 25 21. During the 2024 Premier Volleyball League All Filipino Conference at the Field Sports Arena in Pasig City. Although the HD Spikers faced a potential setback as the Chameleon staged an 8 0 run late in the final set, key plays from Jovelin Fernandez and Chai Troncoso secured the victory. Coach Shaq De Los Santos expressed mixed emotions citing gratitude for the win and acknowledging the team's solid performance, particularly from the starting six. Despite a shaky moment with substitutions, the team recovered and De Los Santos views the near meltdown as a valuable learning experience. With this win, Signal joins Creamline and Choco Mucho at the top with a 3-0 record, while NX led falls to 0-3 in the standings. Bianca Busamante prepares for the F1 Academy 2024. As the opening round of F1 Academy 2024 approaches, Filipina racer Bianca Busamante, part of the McLaren Driver Development Program, is set to compete in her McLaren Colored Tattoos F4 T421. Eager to surpass her 7th place finish from her rookie year, the 19-year-old racer aims to contend for the championship in the 15th driver grid. Recognized by Formula 1 teams, Busamante is among the 10 drivers selected to run their liveries in the seven-round season, emphasizing increased female involvement in motorsport. The F1 Academy calendar aligning with F1 race weekends includes stops in Saudi Arabia, the United States, Spain, Netherlands, Singapore, Qatar, and Abu Dhabi. Busamante, optimistic about her growth, anticipates a different on and off track persona this season. The new season introduces changes in format and point system, featuring wildcard entries and offering FIA super license points to the top five drivers in the standings. The champion will receive 10 points, contributing to their Progression in the road to F1 ladder. International feature. With the removal of the age limit, is Patricia Javier considering participating in Miss Universe? Since the removal of the age limit in Miss Universe, there's been an increase in women expressing interest in competing for the prestigious crown. At 44, Patricia Javier was asked about the possibility in a recent PEP interview held during an event celebrating her health and wellness at Focasi. While acknowledging the allure of joining Miss Universe, she expressed contentment with her current position. Javier, the 29 Nobel Queen of the Universe title holder, emphasized her commitment to advocacy, particularly community assistance. 
she highlighted her roles as a wife and mother, pri prioritizing her family alongside her novel in divorce. National Feature Michelle D. promotes love and respect amidst the transgender conflict between Filipinos and Thais in Bangkok. Miss Universe Philippines 2023 Michelle D. addressed the recent confrontation involving Filipino and Thai transgender groups in Bangkok, Thailand. Stressing the importance of love, respect, and kindness, D. advocated for a positive approach to conflicts. Expressing her stand, she emphasized the need to contribute to a better world and find common ground for mutual understanding. Known for her friendship with Thai beauty queen Antonia Porcild, Deke encourages a harmonious and positive environment. In light of the Bangkok incident, two Filipino transgenders are set to pay a fine and face de deportation. Trivia, who is the inventor of mathematics? Mathematics, rather than being an invention, is considered a discovery that developed over thousands of years with contributions from various individuals across different civilizations, including China, India, Mesopotamia, and Egypt. Basic mathematical functions such as addition and multiplication appeared simultaneously in this ancient societies. The oldest clay tablets with mathematics date back over 4,000 years in Mesopotamia, in Mesopotamia, while the oldest written texts on mathematics come from ancient Egypt. About 2,500 years ago in ancient Greece, mathematician Pythagoras contributed to the organized development of mathematics. Since then, mathematical discoveries have continuously expanded our understanding, building upon each over, building upon each other over the centuries. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching Pinoy Rob News channel, Kagayan de Oro. I am asking once more to support and subscribe and turn on notification for more updates and more info. I repeat, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.